Hey guys, welcome back to another episode with me, Lady Game Goth. So we are back at Majora's Mask for Zelda. How exciting! Um, okay, so last episode I just went back and double checked. Um, so we finished the swamp, which was pretty cool, and we are able to move on to the next area. But before I do that, I wanted to go through the town a little bit, explore it, do some of the like side missions that's actually going to help me out in the future. Um, so one of the things that I want to do first is there is a gentleman here. Uh, if you played Ocarina of Time, this is the guy that's like all upset in the, um, he's not here yet. Um, he's the guy that's upset in the windmill, uh, for some guy that taught him a song and it made the windmill go too fast. So actually he's here at night. So let's get to the night time. Okay. So let's talk to him. La la la. They said I was much too loud when I practiced in my room. He's staying at the inn in town. They got mad. Sigh. Now I'm sad. I'll just think about the past to keep my mind off the bad. Ah, uh, yes. I'll do that. Dear guest, long ago I was in an animal troop with dogs and donkeys and such. Why could a... Why could a... Why could a man join? That's because a man is an animal, too, my boy. They were all great, but there was one thing I didn't like about it. Oh my god. Why was the... Why was the... Why was the dog the leader? Was it because something was wrong with me, sir? Why is this guy jealous of a dog? Oh, that dog was an amazing leader. He always had a stellar troop, no matter what animals he had to work with. That's why I, that's why I, I stole it, the dog's mask, I stole it. I wanted it because it was the leader's mask, but I no longer need it. I give it to my guest. Cool, we got the Bremen mask. This mask belonged to the leader of the animal troop. Try parading it around tiny young animals. The leader was a good instructor. His members matured quickly and they became adults in an instant. So, that probably means absolutely nothing to you right now. And you're just like, cool, I listened to this guy tell me his sob story and I got a free mask out of it. So if you see, like, when you put the mask on, it changes your sword to march. Um, and you actually march around. Okay, we're back. So it's dawn of the final day and we are here at Romany Ranch. And uh, if you see, we're at the Cuckoo Hut. So we are going to enter. And this is where you're going to get what I think is essentially one of the most important masks in the game. Um, if you don't want to spend time running around very slowly everywhere. So I'll talk to this rad dude. I heard it from my gramps, says the moon's gonna fall. With something that big, it's sure to take this ranch down with it. <sighs> oh well. My only regret is that I won't get to see these guys in their prime as roosters. So if you remember, uh, this mask apparently matures any animal that followed in this troop instantly. And this guy wants to see these little chickies uh, as roosters. So let's march away. And you notice that these chicks follow in line. Now the only thing that sucks about this is there are these little tiny yellow dots and you cannot let go of the march button. If you do, they will all go back to their spots. Uh, and I just hate that God forbid I like miss one in my travels. I'm like slowly marching everywhere to re-grab these. Yep. Look at that. 
all the cuckoos parading around. Awesome. I don't really get it, but just seeing these guys with a crest and all, I don't have regrets about anything anymore. I'm perfectly satisfied. Here, you can have this from me. Alright, so we got the bunny hood. My, what long ears it has. Will the power of the wild spring forth? Yeah, these guys are all roosters. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, hippy dippy guy is happy. So, the cool thing about the bunny hood. So this is your normal rate of speed. And then this is the bunny hood rate of speed. So this is why I love the bunny hood. Um, it just makes life so much easier. So with that being said, um, there really isn't much else to do in town that's super important. So I'm just gonna head and make my way over to uh, the second area, which is Snow Peak. That is the entrance of Snow Peak. So let's make our way over and completely avoid these Dodongos. I went the wrong way. So heading up into the mountains. Look. Up here, take a look at this. I bet if you had a weapon that was strong enough, one shot from it could pierce right through this. Well, it might take two shots. Well, what did we just get in the swamp is our hero's bow. Let's shoot this bad boy down. Ta da! Oh, I forgot. I need bombs! Ah, uh, okay. In town, there is a bomb shop. And from what I remember, they're waiting on a delivery. Uh, but the delivery hasn't arrived yet because it is delivered by this guy's grandmother. So what we're going to do is go talk to those guys and see what's up. Alright, bomb shop. Welcome. We're expecting to get our larger bomb bag back in stock pretty soon. But now that I think about it, it's already late. So we could purchase a bomb bag um, that's like a regular size bomb bag for 50 rupees. However, I'm not gonna do that. I am actually going to speed up time to tonight because um, that is when the grandmother is delivering the bomb bag and you'll see what happens. So be right back. Hey, right, while we're waiting, so these two girls, they always are bitchy to you anytime you try to talk to them, but they actually play a part um, in this game at some point. Check out this shady character over here. Just like in the corner behind everything. I'm not doing anything suspicious, really. I'm gonna watch you, that's for sure. Okay, hey, it's 11.30 at night. And old lady's gonna come right through that door in just a few seconds. A few moments later. There she is. Old lady grandma carrying her bomb bag. Mysterious cutscene. Oh, look, the guy who wasn't doing anything suspicious. Ouch, watch out. Stop, thief! Give the old lady her luggage back! And now we're gonna run after the guy. Bomb bag drops on the floor. You can't really do anything afterwards, but... You know, you just watch him tiptoe around everywhere. Bye! Jackass. Thank you. Since he didn't make off with them, I can finally stop bomb bags at our shop. Maybe I'll put them out tomorrow. Yes, I must thank you. It's a dangerous mask, but maybe you could use it to throw your festival fireworks show. So we got the blast mask. Uh, we can wear it and basically blow stuff up with sacrificing our own health. <laughs> our friend is here. Yes, he is. 
I can't believe I remember all this stuff. So, when you're walking around, you hear this song, and you can't tell where it's coming from until, like, one time you're just walking by here, and you notice a half-naked white man dancing. I am no longer part of the living, my sadness to the moon. I haven't left my dance to the world. I am filled with regret. Basically, I'm disappointed. Oh, moon, I have died. Oh, I plan to bring the world together and stir it into a giant melting pot with my dance. If only I had taught my new dance to someone. So basically the guy is upset because he died and didn't get to like leave on his legacy of this dance. So, uh, to make him feel better, we're gonna play him the Song of Healing. Uh, that's what it was. Okay. He's like, oh, I feel so much better. Spread my dance across the world. Train its followers. Ah. Basically, I have taught it to you. Now make it into a popular dance craze. So, basically, it's a mask of this guy's face. Oh. <laughs> and it's an ah. extension of your face. <laughs> I mean, is that not creepy? Like, you just walk up to someone like, Hey, what's up? <laughs> so then, if you remember, we passed those two girls in the square. We were dancing, and we play a part um, in this game. And they're like all ponderous because they have no idea um, what to do for their, their dance. They're like, they do a move and then they ponder. So that's where this guy comes in. Okay. See, so they're like, dance, mm, maybe not, dance, mm, maybe not. So we're gonna dance for them. Oh, such a dance craze. He's like, what the fuck is going on over there? Thank you for teaching us those steps. You are our master. Yay, heart piece. And we've assembled a new heart container. Awesome. So now for the rest of the three days, they will do this dance endlessly for hours on end until the morning comes. And one last thing before we go, let's open up a bank account, shall we? Hey there, little guy, won't you deposit some rupees? Nowadays, even if people have money, they don't deposit nothing, nothing. That's, that's these days too, uh, not even just back then. So for a limited time, I'll give you a special gift based on how much you deposit. For example, if you deposit 200 rupees, you'll get an item that holds a lot of rupees, aka a wallet. Uh, so what will it be? Let's deposit what I have right now, which is six whole rupees, just to get this started. Really? Are you depositing six rupees? Yes. That's it? That ain't nothing at all, big spender, but if you say so. So what's your name? Hmm, Nenya, is it? Got it. I won't forget your deposits. Let me stamp you with my special ink. Hey, relax. It doesn't leave any marks, and it's not gonna hurt. And then he, like, stamps your head. There. Now I know... I'll know you when I see you. Six rupees total. Okay, great. Okay, so because I really don't have any money right now, I'm just going to sacrifice my own health. It's only half a heart. And I just blew up the... Uh, entryway that was being blocked by giant snowballs and could only be blown up. Okay, Mountain Village. Everything is frozen over with 
a random Goron just up there. Whoa, whoa! Up here, up here! I am sorry to bother you from such a high place, but I am very hungry and I have gotten stuck here. It's so cold, I am so very hungry, I don't think I'm going to make it. I just want to eat once more before I die up here, something tough and hard to chew. I cannot forget that flavor. So I know that this is like a big thing with a lot of people, is that Gorons eat rocks. So why couldn't you just eat any old rock? But anything that you throw up there, like a bomb or another rock, like he'll just deny it. Um, you have to get something specific. All right, Mountain Smithy, hello. <laughs> Shut up. Just when I was having a good dream. Oh, welcome to the Mountain Smithy, where we take our time to make a good point. I am Zabora, the owner. Pleased to meet you. That huge fellow is my assistant, Gabora. He's all brawn and about as smart as a Deku stick. Say, did you come to have your sword sharpened? Unfortunately, we're not doing any business right now. It's because of this abnormal cold snap we've been having. See, our hearth has been frozen over. The way things are going now, I won't be able to do any business until spring. If I could just do something about that frozen hearth. Eh? What's that? You say if we had hot water, we could melt the ice off the hearth? Don't act like you know what you're talking about, you Deku stick. So mean to him. Oh, he believes a rumor that says long ago there were hot springs somewhere in the mountains near here. Bah, I don't believe such rubbish. Hmm, interesting. I wonder where those hot springs could be. Somewhere nearby. Deep water. Gorons, beware. Gorons who can't swim shouldn't play near here. I assume that no Goron can probably swim. Oh, is this it? Yep. Okay. Look at this giant snowball. Isn't this snowball bigger than the others? So, you're probably like, what the heck is this? So it's a Goron that's frozen solid, and he's one of the ancient ones. So you have to figure out how we are going to get him out. So that's the entryway to the Gorons, but there's nobody up top, which is interesting. Where is everybody? Ah, Hoot Hoot Owlman. Hoot hoot, we meet again, fairy child. Have my stone statues been of help? Well, it seems you may have the strength to change the fate of this land as I had expected. But the road ahead is even more challenging. Many trials await you. Please watch over these Gorons around you. Their land is doomed to be smothered in snow and ice forever. It will become a land where no living thing can survive. Without courage and determination, you surely will collapse from the extreme conditions. But if that courage and determination burns bright within you, then that's another story. So will you proceed? Of course I will. Woohoot, you are a child of many strengths. Well, perhaps you do have enough strength to change the fate of this mountain after all. I shall take to the air now, flying onward, or toward, that shrine across the way, so follow behind me. Do not be daunted by appearances. Instead, let your feelings guide you, and the true path shall open before you. Are you ready? Follow behind me. Okay. And we made it. Great. Hoot, I have certainly been assured your courage and determination. From here on, you must not be fooled by appearances. You must rely on your feelings. Now enter the shrine. Something that will aid you in your quest lies within. Use that item when returning from here. Okay, great.
The lens of truth. Gaze through it to see mysteries that are invisible to the naked eye. Seeing the truth drains magic power, so tap it again to stop looking. So, good old lens of truth with the nice little Sheikah symbol on it. Right, so... Got some things in here that we might... Yep, like... The... Skulltula up there. You don't initially see. And there's a chest there. With 20 rupees in it. Whoops. Oh. I was hoping I would have gotten out in time, but I guess not. Alright, let's use Lens of Truth to get out of here, and there's those ice cubes. Or ice blocks, whatever you want to call them. And a mysterious ghost Goron, which is very interesting. Oh, can it be? Are you able to see me? If you truly can see me, then follow behind me. Heading towards the lake. Oh, and look at that. Lots of bars going up, and that's where he's going. So let's look at this now. Okay, we've got to the right, to the left, and to the right. Okay, cool. Up we go. Okay. So I guess we're going in there, but let's talk to this guy first, huh? This is the grave where a Goron hero rests. I came here to put up the great hero's memorial, but the return route has been blocked by snow, and I can't get back to Goron village. And even worse, my brother has been frozen solid from the cold. The way things are looking, I'll be frozen too. Oh, it's like times like this that make me wish I had taken some of the hot spring water I found when I was digging the hero's grave. But the hot spring is now covered by the gravestone. I can't move a gravestone that big by myself. But I guess this is what's meant by the Goron saying, there's no use in crying over spilt rocks. Brr. That's some context. It's a hero, a dead hero. The Soaring One said, the one who could see me would be arriving soon. It seems that it turned out to be true. I am Darmany the Third. The blood of the proud Goron heroes runs in me. This feels strange for me to say, but when I was alive, I was a renowned warrior and veteran. Yes, when I was alive. But alas, I am now dead. I was fine until I marched off to the Snowhead by myself, hoping that I could drive off a demon. It had been wreaking havoc on Goron Village. Then the blizzard at Snowhead blew me into the valley, and now here I am. How infuriating. As I am, I can only watch as Goron Village is slowly buried in ice. I may have died, but I cannot rest. So, can you use magic? The Soaring One also told me that you were able to use it. I beg you, bring me back to life with your magic. If it is beyond your power, then I beg of you to do this for me instead. Heal my sorrows. Any way that you can do it will suffice. Please heal my sorrows. So... With heal being highlighted, only one thing left to do is play, um, the Song of Healing. What a soothing melody. My sorrows are melting away into the song. I leave my undying feelings with you. The deeds I accomplished while living are carved on my grave. You should read it. You got the Goron mask. This mask contains the spirit of a proud Goron hero. So cool. Uh, for the Goron village, I have asked your assistance. So we've got a lot of masks this episode. We've got three, four different, ma five different masks. 
So in the swamp, we were able to change into a Deku, and now we are able to change into, look at this guy. It's amazing. A nice big bellied guy. And you can roll around. So this is like awesome for travel because you just roll around, you can ground pound. Uh, he's like your extra big strong guy. So the other thing, um, I'm not gonna read his tombstone because it's literally just telling you how to do stuff for the Goron. Um, but one thing that we are gonna do is grab this tombstone and move it back to reveal... Hot Spring! Awesome. Uh, so... This hot spring is now going to help us accomplish several different things um, to get to the Gorons. So that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Please subscri subscribe to my channel. It'll really help me out. Oh, and now, of course, it's the second day. Um, so we'll see you guys on the second day. Please subscribe to my channel. It's going to really help me out. Like the video and leave a comment. Um, and just make sure you tap the bell so that you're notified next time I upload another episode. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!